Hello lovelies, welcome to Amy at Melbourne. My name's Amy, obviously. And this week I thought that I would take you along on a special trip, the Southern Hemisphere's biggest wool and sheep show. Not my first year going to Spendigo. This is my second year. I loved it last year. So I thought I'd go again this year and make an even bigger weekend of it and actually stay. So I was camping out and I stayed there in Bendigo. I thought that I'd take you along with me. Good morning. It's time to go to the wool show. And we'll be... Oh, well, blast. Hey, let's do it. The Australian Sheep and Wool Show is the largest event of its type in the entire world, and it's held annually in Bendigo. The show is a massive celebration of sheep and includes farming, fashion, food, and fibre. It's also a Sears large fibre market. At the show, there are over 2,700 sheep, 30,000 attendees, 5,000 farmers, and 350 stallholders. I grew up on a farm, so I actually love looking at all of the agricultural things as well as the fibre market. But of course, in this video, because of my channel, I'm going to be focusing mostly on the fibre. But I thought that I'd show you some of the amazing farming things, including the animals, the baby animals, and some of the equipment as well. The show also has a big focus on women, fashion, and fibre. And nowhere can you see this more than at the fashion show that they put on every year, which showcases some amazing things that have been made by Australians from across the country as part of the wool craft competition. There are more classes and varieties of things that I can even begin to say in the one video. If you want to find out more about the show's wool craft, then I have links down below in the description where you can head to the show's website. I thought that everything in the competition was stellar and amazing, but this was my favorite piece from the entire show. It is hand spun, knitted and beaded. It's an incredible wedding dress. As I said before, this is Australia's largest fiber market. So I'm gonna show you the market. I'm gonna try and include the names of all the shops as much as I can remember. But if you want to see the entire list of all the store holders, that will be down below in the description as a link to Australia's Sheep and Wool Show, where they have all of the store holders linked in their website. I was really glad that I gave myself two days to look through all of the stalls that they have at the show because with 350 store holders, there is a lot of fiber to see, there's a lot of wool, there's a lot of everything to see really. And I love it. I enjoy this part so much every year, getting to see the amazing things that are being produced and created in Australia and showcased here at the show. But of course, it can be overwhelming and very difficult to make a decision about exactly what to buy. I have a few favorites of places that I often go to because I love the things that they create and I follow them. And some of them are actually friends as well, which is fantastic. So I'm going to show you some of theirs, but I am trying to be very equal across all of this and show everyone's stuff.
end of day one at the wool show and I am now going to go off to Benigo Woolen Mill and have a look, get some lunch and then set up my campsite. So I'll take you along for all those things, of course. Tomorrow I'm going to be shopping and I want to watch the dog trials because it's like my favourite. might be the windiest day I've ever set up a tent in my life. Look at it. Oh, the cow. So the guy ropes are strong. That's my little bead table with you my chair <laughs> my god bless <laughs> how cozy well i set up my camping setup and it was meant to be like very long and it's just windy raining some very lovely lovely people you were camping across the way, came over to help me stuff I can't because it was literally flying away in my hands. Like it was dragging me with it. I am not light. <laughs> so that happened. I haven't had lunch because I got here and set up and then was like, if I leave, my tent is probably not going to be. So uh, we'll see. Oh, it's me. I do really know the thing. I need to sleep safe dinner. I do have my snack box, but that's not dinner. That's just. An apple. Yep. I missed it out. Hey, that doesn't count. I also need water. But I don't want to leave the tent again. I got some cool wool though. Do I think? Yep. Uh, so now, many go all now. Coming to the show first. Lovely time. Going back tomorrow. And then I went to Benny Go Wool Mill. I went to Benny Go Wool Mill after that. So, the booth. Yes. Let's show you the beat of them. You got biggest. Which says to wrap me. Not the same brand, it's green. And, and this, I got beer balls, what's that? From the seconds area, which was very goodness. So I'm going to make me this color work sweater. Jumped. Wolf color. So it's got my base. Then. Sure to. This to go with, which is in another color. I don't know. Summit blue. Oh, good year. I'm hoping I have enough this to add some color to the jumper and also make. Best should you put this is this is called antique red and it's just mm. insane. This is one of their regulars. This is just a sort of, you know, not standard colour from them. It's beautiful. These are two hundred mm -hmm. as well. Yep. Yep. Plain black. And that is in the colour Raven. And that is from their standard range. Is this brown which is in the colour rust. I think between those colours, and you couldn't find a smelling ball of and white or like cream, and I mean, it's like, and it'd be just for like, so I don't know whether I'd go back to my and see if I can find some because it was hectic in there, and so many people and I hate people. Oh, it. And I got so the full show, I tried to be is. Very minimal today because I'm going back tomorrow and tomorrow is my show week. They want to look at everything, sell lots of plastic again. We've got 100 to 11 windmills who I am really sad. I missed out on one of the soft lookers. They have things just brought out. They were really great, but I'm going to order it on my own. And then I got this, which is really cute. And it is, see, it is a actually a badge and it, you can use it to snip your yarn. The yarn cutter. It's just got a little badge on it so you can like richly pin it to the inside of your project bag. No. Um, so that's a little windmills from Mavis Handmade. I got this gay. 
because it just prickles. Grab this, and I thought this is the best thing ever for sock knitting. Give me. Oh, all right. It's like little kitchen stitch helper. And also, I'm going to leave that on in my sock project bag or on my socks so that I can always do the kitchen stitch to finish them. Because I always forget how to do it. If you don't know, maybe a single thing. She makes acrylic, like laser cut stitch markers and lots of other things. Those stitch markers are my favourite. I love them. Always such layering, but she accepts. Cool. Can you get me Your little stitch markers. So that is all that I have today. <laughs> so now I'm going to chill out. You may do some knitting, painting, Wait. something, and then I'm going to go out and get dinner and all those things. So yeah, it's time to relax. <laughs> It's day two of the show and I know you thought that I got every single shop yesterday because I filmed a lot, but no, there is more to see. There is still more shops and these are just the fiber related textile shops. I'm not filming the ag shops or the food or any of the other things. This is just the fiber stuff. So yeah, this show is massive. You could definitely do three days here very easily, particularly if the weather was a bit nicer. I also wanted to just remind you that all of the shops that I'm showing you are small indie companies. If you could even call all of them that, there are a lot of these are just one person making these things at home and then they're bringing it to the show to sell here because this is where people really do come out and support local producers. It's very important, but of course, they can't survive on just the profits that they make at this show alone. So please head and have a look at the links if you find any of these shops interesting or want to see more of their things. Head over to their Instagrams and follow them, share their stuff because they are all amazing, brilliant producers and incredible designers and just people as well. And they definitely deserve our support.
as I said earlier, I love all the farming stuff, but in particular, I wanted to point out how many women are doing all of the roles. So here we're doing the sheepdog trials and there are lots of women in this competition. There's women who are doing the shearing as well as the women who are doing the, the throwing. So this part of the competition is called wool handling and it is just as important, if not more important than the shearing itself. This is the way that we are able to get good cuts, single cuts away from the underbelly and all the other rough cuts um, that the shearer is doing. This is a sport in and of itself as well as the shearing. So you may not have heard of wool handling, but it's really important and it is highly skilled. Oh, fantastic. I've just finished day two at the wool and sheep show, sheep and wool show. On and stuffed. I didn't, I don't think I saw everything. I think I missed like an entire shed of baby animals, which is just so sad. But my feet hurt and I'm tired. Didn't spend too much money. So I think that's all I'm going to see. Plus it is still cold and it is like misty raining today on Sunday. So Friday was gale force winds. Saturday was a bit of both and Sunday's rain. Yeah. So I'm going to go and have some lunch now and then go back to my campsite and it. The Walton Sheep Show always has a pretty good map. However, they probably do have a lot of signage, but there's so much signage of advertising as well that it can be really difficult to know which sign is for what and to actually find the important signs that are telling you which way to walk and go. So I will say that in terms of how Bendigo Show is set up. Yesterday, I got basically lost trying to work out how the hell to get out of the car parking there after, you know, the morning of getting us in. There was no one marshalling around to let us know how to get out. So there was just all these cars just winding their way back and forth through. Uh, and the signage was appalling for that particular part. Like it was really hard to find where it was supposed to be going. Yeah, I think that I think that needs to be fixed up a little bit. I'll also say this year in particular, there is almost nothing for kids here. I didn't bring my kids this year, so that's technically fine for me. But there are a lot of kids here and having some more things that are themed to them so that you're able to as a parent give them little breaks to go and do their thing so that you can enjoy doing your thing while you're here because you know families are an important part of this um sort of event as well so that would be something else I think they need to work on in future years but apart from that I had a lovely time there's heaps of food not that I had any but there was heaps of food there was heaps of indoor spaces there was heaps of cover the MC for the shearing is fantastic. Yeah, it was just overall, it was a really lovely weekend at the Wool and Shape Show. And that is when I stopped filming because I got food poisoning from my lunch. So I didn't film anymore while I was there. I was just in pain and, you know, all the other things that come with food poisoning. Stunning digestive pyrotechnics. And then I, the next day, I just got up, packed up my camp, and came home early. So that's that's just that's how it ended, unfortunately. I'm going to show you now the last of the things that I bought in Spendigo so that you've, you can see them all. I got some really amazing things. So let's have a look. So I got this from Eco Friendly Wares, um, really lovely shop. And this is nettle um, yarn. And it gets. It holds more water and also lets out more water than what cotton does. It doesn't get that lucky smell. It gets really soft. So I'm going to use this to make some washcloths and other sort of eco household products. You can use it to make bags and all sorts of other things as well. Um, nettle fiber has been used quite commonly in a lot of Europe, like along with, you know, hemp and flax and things like that. So it's a really handy fiber, but I've never actually seen it as um, yarn. Well, I think I did last year when I went to the same shop. But outside of these guys, this is all I've ever seen. The next things I got are from Made in Mo. Made in Mo? Yeah, Made in Mo. I got a plain natural hake of polwas, which I have not actually had, and I'm going to dye some of that for spinning. Maybe for my shop, we'll see. And then I also got this in the colour Purple Rain. So pretty. Uh, and this is Merino. These are all part of the Australian Fibre Collective. They're actually doing like a raffle basically uh, at the wool show so if you spent over $29 on fiber that's part of the Australian fiber collective 
there, then you go into the racket. So I definitely did that. Part of that, they had a lot of shops there that were part of this and basically just means that the fiber is produced in Australia. A beautiful sock yarn set of minis from Fluff and Nonsense. Fluff and Nonsense are one of my favorite yarn dyers. Um, I love it. I love that it's blue face. Leases, leases, oh, I can never pronounce it, but it's not merino. Um, it's a different yarn, which I really love. I love unusual yarns. I just, yeah, it's like that. That's crinkly. So I love unusual yarns. I'm really excited to make some color work socks. I actually saw quite a few people sporting some beautiful color work socks out about at the show and I was very inspired. So I thought that's perfect. Let's, let's make some of those. Then I got from Kathy's Fibers. So Kathy's Fibers has lots of fiber, hand dyed, hand painted, hand dyed, all sorts, um, sock wools and lots and lots of amazing things. But they, they in particular caught my eye because they have lots of unusual fibers for spinning, including this one, which is mint fiber, which I have never spun before or had. So I'm quite excited to give that a go. It looks really pretty. It looks really soft. I didn't, I haven't opened it to touch it yet. So we'll say got from White Rabbit Handmaid, which is one of my favorite dyes. I got this amazing stripey um, sock base yarn, which is in the color Misty Spring Morning. Just like, it's so pretty. It's like a blue base, but then it's got these beautiful sprinkled sections of purple and green and pink and just, I love it. It's, it's very whimsical. It's yeah. The last little things that I bought are from iCast Mending and they, they had some beautiful big things which you can see in the footage. And I really wanted some of the big things They do, um, poultry, great glazing for things and sculpted type things. So beautiful, but like I had nowhere to put any of the big things. I couldn't take it home. I was camping. Just wasn't going to make any sense. Plus, you know, they're charging what they were. Anything they're undercharging because it's worth a lot. But I bought a couple of little bits. Um, I'm definitely going to be asking for at least a mug, if not a yarn bowl for my birthday because that's beautiful. So, anywho, so I grabbed. <laughs> um, I grabbed a ghost. Which is just so cute. And I also got some stitch markers. And they're all these adorable little potion bottles. I'll show them to you in a sec. They're really cute. And I'm very excited to have them. Made well. I'm excited about seeing what what that business are going to do. Because they're really just gorgeous. They have patterns and hand out yarns and all sorts of things as well. But I was, I was quite enchanted by the product. So that was my time at the Bendigo Sheep and Wool Show. I hope that you enjoyed coming along the journey with me, even though it was insane and intense and filled with problems. But for the most, but the show itself was wonderful. I hope that you, if you haven't been before, that you go along next year and at a minimum, check out some of the amazing storeholders that I'm showcasing in the footage because there is, there's some really talented, amazing people out there who are creating beautiful fibre to use in Australia. There is amazing breeders, shearers, producers, dyers, everyone. Just this, there's, there's so much and it was beautiful to see and wonderful and the community is amazing. I hope that you enjoyed watching the video and if you did, please make sure that you subscribe and like and comment and do all of those things. Turn on bell notifications so that you know when I release more videos in the future. I think the next video that I'm going to be coming out with is all the clothes that I made to go camping at this festival. Uh, I've also got the tutorial for my new Danu pattern coming out soon. And I'm working on some new patterns as well. So make sure they sign up for testing if you're interested in that. Anyway, I'm gonna go and make something specifically this video and I will see you later.